Pass Business Hotline, where one of the premier NFL insiders, Chris Mortensen, longtime friend of mine from Atlanta, ends up making a big splash yesterday here in the city of Philadelphia. He joins us now. Mort, the story breaking on the premiere of my show in, uh, here in Philadelphia, I appreciate you so much bringing that to the table yesterday. I received your thank you text, John. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, this has been beautiful today because... I did I did I acknowledge it? I'm not sure if I did. <laughs> I do know this. We found out that at 10.30 this morning, an hour from now, Howie Roseman and Doug Peterson are going to be on the same day us, sharing yeah, a stage. Yeah, I'm sure they'll... Listen, they, the Eagle season was uh, unforeseen. Uh, a lot of different twists and turns in, in their season. Now, listen, that was true of the NFL because of the pandemic and everything. But uh, I, 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 will, I don't think uh, it will be a revelatory press conference, but I don't know. I well, mean, I, I really don't. We were told to expect Doug Peterson on Tuesday, and that was as late as last night. And now this morning, we get word that he's speaking this morning at 1030 and Howie Roseman speaking, too. It's just got everybody's antennae up because more from the outside looking in, it appears that right now there's a lot of dysfunction. Would you appear that do you believe that that is a proper depiction on my part? I think there has been a lot of dysfunction with the Eagles, at least going back to last January. So a year ago, you know, from the time that Doug Peterson told uh Eagles media and, and, and anybody else listening that he anticipated no changes on his coaching staff. And the next day he's firing two coaches. Where do we think they came from? That is a, that is a, uh, an obvious hint of, of dysfunction. People not being on the same page. But then as we went through this season, I think we saw a lot of it. And I think we saw, and listen, and there's, there are many different storylines with the Eagles, and that includes, obviously, the Carson Wentz. What happened to him? Uh, you know, Jalen Hurts playing and playing, I thought, very well uh, under the circumstances. And then what's going to happen going forward? And there's stories out there. So I imagine Harry Roseman uh, will, and Doug Peterson will address the, the story that's been – that I reported that I think Adam Schefter had certainly – suggested was leaning to toward the fact that Carson Wentz wants out. Uh, they can say whatever they want. I can tell you Carson Wentz wants out. Unless we hear Carson Wentz stand up and say uh, that story is not true, then I'm going to believe uh, my sources, which are uh, many. And, oh, by the way, no agent involvement in the story, as suggested last night by the great Al Michaels. And I don't say that in jest about Al because I have great admiration for him. Chris, if, if you were moving forward with this organization, and this isn't a reporting thing, it's an opinion thing. If you were moving forward, I, many of us here believe that you can't do it with both Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson. Which one would you choose if you had to decide one over the other? <laughs> I am a reporter. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> That's I why I asked you to be a columnist for a second. <laughs> yeah, I'm a reporter. So I, I have to stick to the reporter thing. I, I, I will say this. If Carson Wentz, uh, well, let me say this. I, I don't disagree that Carson Wentz was broken. I mean, listen, something was broken about Carson Wentz and not, not, that made him perform at a very poor level. And at some point, I mean, he, it just kept going downhill, downhill. And it doesn't really connect to what happened last December when there were there, there were issues with the Eagles' uh, personnel, and he's winning with practice squad players. I mean, he was spectacular last December. In early January, and then he, and then Jadavian Clowney speared him in the back, and that you know the head, and that ended the season in the playoffs. And you can't say that's injury prone. You know, everybody saw the hit, uh, so I, something happened, uh, and I don't know. And listen, I know the the offensive line changes. I think there were personnel decisions that were made uh, that Howie may or may not own up to. I think Howie would own up to a lot of things. I mean, listen, uh, everybody's talking about what happened last night. You know, did they play to get that sixth six pick in the draft, best pick possible? Uh, and you could say, fine, and Danny, that's great. That's what we want. Well, does that give me confidence that you're going to pick Justin Jefferson where he was supposed to go or take Jalen Rager where he wasn't supposed to go? So uh, it, it was it smart to bring back Deshaun Jackson and, and Alshon Jeffrey. Uh, and, you know, the offensive line obviously had its issues. And, 
So what I'm, I'm, I'm all over the map because I think the organization is all, all over the map. So does that suggest dysfunction or suggest they've gotten off the same page? And injuries will do that to you, but so will decisions that uh, you weren't anticipating that you end up making anyway. Uh, we'll, we'll put the Eagles in that type of situation they're facing today, which is it's a bad season. They ended on a very bad note. Chris Mortensen joining us here on the Comcast Business Hotline here, the premiere of the John Kincaid Show here on 97.5 The Fanatic. So, Mort, if, um, if Carson Wentz does want out, what do you believe his market value is around the NFL? I know you're talking to people 24-7. Do you believe he's got a lot of value, and do you believe the Eagles would be able to get a haul in return, considering what someone has to take on salary cap wise with him? I've only, uh, I, I have only, you know, barely touched the stove on that one in terms of gauging because there's so much going on. As you know, I mean, there's a lot going on with the coaches and general managers and changes that are going on in the league, and the playoffs are going on. Uh, but, you know, basically, yeah, listen, I think there are multiple teams that have interest. Uh, I know uh, a couple of teams that have interest. Can't quite engage. This is not, a, this is not getting a first-round pick for Carson Wentz right now. I think there's some teams that really want to do the work and evaluate what did happen this year. Why did Carson go fall off the cliff, so to speak? I mean, some of it you can explain away, and then and then I think it, if you're a team that's interested, you you're going to want to really dig in and, and, and see, okay, is he worth a second and fourth round pick? And, and then listen, from Howie what, Roseland's perspective, uh, you know, and my understanding is that he's kind of expressed internally that if, if it comes to this, if Carson really is going to push this, uh, to the, to the edge, and, and that would mean to the edge of the draft, so to speak, or free agency uh, where, where he wants out, then, uh, I'm not giving him away. In other words, Howie Rosen's not going to give him away for nothing. So Chris, I, what can they get? I, I would say they should be able to get a second-round pick plus. Uh, and then the other thing is that they're going to have to get some salary cap help from Carson Wentz. Or Carson Wentz is Carson Wentz's agent, and, and Howie Rosen would have to figure something out. And there's going to be some fight, fighting over that internally in terms of whether they even do this and how they do it. Chris, during your reporting on on this Carson Wentz stuff, did you ever get the feeling or maybe word that the Eagles do believe that Jalen Hurts is their quarterback moving forward? Uh, no, I did not get that sense. But I think that, I think there was some satisfaction that he he handled himself really well. I mean, you know, you know last night people say, okay, he's seven of twenty, a pick, he missed some throws, but he ran for two touchdowns. He, <clears throat> excuse me, he, he you know Jalen's got a great presence about him. I saw him play at Alabama and Oklahoma like everybody else. I, I know him somewhat personally. Uh, and, and and so I didn't get the sense that he's the guy going forward, but I also don't get the sense that, well, we know he can't play. Actually, I think they feel that uh, they're, they're, they did well there with Jalen Hurts. Uh, whether there was wisdom in drafting him in the second round, that's, that's another debate. But... Uh, Yo, I know this much. I'm anxious to see what the Eagles are going to do if Carson Wentz truly is able to get his way out of Philadelphia. Whether whether they'll say we're just going with Jalen Hurts and we can run our offense through Jalen Hurts and we'll, we'll add another quarterback to the mix. Because as you know, Nate Sudfeld, this is his last year of the contract too, right? Is there? Yeah, and, and I think they saw last night maybe that that's that's not what they would want to do. Is there any? Is there any way? That Doug Peterson has had a meeting that you'd believe that would something would be so egregious to him about a staff change or something like that that he decided to say today, I want to walk away from this organization. And how long would Doug Peterson be on the street in your belief as a head coaching mm. candidate? I I don't know the answer to your question on Doug uh, whether whether he walks away. How long would he be on the street? I don't. Uh, I think he would be. I think he would be in play, and, and one of the places he would you, you would think he would be in play at would be the New York Jets, uh, where Joe Douglas, uh, who, who you know headed the personnel department before he took that Jets general manager job. I mean, it, listen, Joe's looking for a coach. Uh, you know, I don't know that Doug would be his first choice, but I know he would be on the list. But then that involves compensation. It's not a trade. You know, franchises don't trade coaches, even though you know. It's about compensation, but I've heard nothing that Doug wants out. 
Uh, I've heard people say Doug has to want out with the way he's running his team, but they don't know. Uh, and and uh, and so it'd be. I'm sure you know. Doug has said he expects to be back, right? He's actually said he has a good yes. relationship with Carson Wentz. Uh, you know, and when the word relationship probably is it needs to be defined. I think when you lose trust in each other, that's a relationship problem. Ask, ask any wife. <laughs> now, Mort, uh, before I let you go, do you have any words of advice for my new teammates here at 97.5 The Fanatic? We've known each other for two decades. Do you have any, like, a, sort of like an, a hint inside the owner's manual for these guys that maybe you could give them? Because we, we you Help know, us, Mort. You've learned to deal with me. Here's the thing. You're, you are from Philadelphia, right? Yes, sir. What more needs to be said? <laughs> there you go. More. And, and that's, not, that's not a criticism. Sure. But you, you are what you are. <laughs> it's, oh. And it's going to be a fun ride. I'm looking forward to listening in, guys. Thank you, Mort. Appreciate it. Love you, buddy. Thanks for making time for us today. Thanks, Great Chris. Great to be able to Thank talk you. to Chris Mortensen Bye. joining us today on the premiere edition of the John Kincaid Show here on 97.5.